Okay, this is part 7B. So you should have already done 7A. If you haven't, make sure you click on, there's a link somewhere uh, on the screen you can click on uh, for 7A. And 7A, we left off with a program that is able to get all nine disks and bring them back to the box that they're supposed to go in. So now I want to have it put the disks back. And in order to do that, you know, we don't know where it picked them up from. We just said drive forward until you get it. Now we want to record that information so that we can know where to put them back. And we can do that um, by storing them each in a variable, but that gets a little messy. So we can create a different kind of variable called a list. So I'm gonna make a list called uh, disk location. And you can see I've actually already created it, but you make it the same way. You just type in the, the name, so disk location, and then the length of the disk, or excuse me, of the, of the list. And so we know we need nine different spots in our list uh, to record those locations. And so if you say set disk location, you can see now I have this list with nine zeros. And each of these lists, the position is how you find that information, how you get it uh, from the variable in the future. So with a regular variable, you can just say, you know, get me this variable. With this variable, you say, get me item one from this list or item two from this list or item three from this list and so on. And so I don't need to set the locations as zero. They start out as zero by default. And then we're gonna use this nifty little thing called the monitor up here. And we're gonna set our variables. And you see there's little check marks here. And then you can say add list and you can select on the different lists that you have just created. Now we can see that on the right in, the, in this monitor. Um, so as we store information in there, we're going to know uh, what, uh, we're gonna see it change. All right, so we're gonna start off with something uh, pretty simple uh, where when we hit the first one, right? So we're gonna repeat this first three. Uh, we want it to record, so we'll say replace item one of whatever, replace one uh, or one to uh, this value. So right now, this is location one. In a lot of programming languages, the first location is the zero location. In VexVR or VexCode, they've chosen that lists and arrays, the first one is location one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So anytime I want to get a value from that variable, I can specify the position of the where the, the information is stored. It's kind of like a spreadsheet. So we're going to replace item one of dislocation with the Y value when we grab the disk. So when the disk is grabbed, that we know that it will wait until it is near an object. And at that point, it's at the first disk. So we'll say, we're gonna set it to the Y value. Let's run that and see what happens. We can see that it is zero, boom, negative 80. That is the Y value, 330. So it's just recording that in the first spot, 729. We don't want it to just keep overwriting that first spot. We want it to go to the next spot. And so the way that we can get it to go to the next spot is by uh, putting in a variable that it will automatically advance to the next spot. Let me show you. So we're gonna call a variable. We're gonna call it list location. And we want it to record at the list location. Now list location starts at zero, so we are gonna need to set that at one. And then we want it to advance each time it records the value. So we'll say list location change by one. So once it re repeats that, it's gonna change the list location by one. We actually need to change this to uh, replace item list value or list location. So list location is gonna start out as one, 
it's going to um, record that and then it's going to go up by to, by one so it'll be at two it'll run through this whole thing three four five six and we can actually see list location value right here okay let's click start Okay, it's at position one, now it's at position two. Okay, now it should go to position three. All right, and then it's at position four, so that'll be four, five, six. All right, cool, so we ran through the whole program and now we have all nine positions. And so just like we stepped through the variable uh, to record the location. So we said uh, first we want to use spot one of the list and then we want to use spot two of the list, spot three, four, five. And we want to now reverse that. So we have this information, so let's use it. Okay, so this is where I'm starting. And if you notice that I'm in front of the disks, uh, or excuse me, the disks are behind me instead of in front of me like they were in the beginning. And so if I look at my current program right here, I know I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna run it three times, so for the three different rows. And then in each row, I'm gonna run uh, three times. Uh, and then I want to go to the second row just two times. So I'm actually gonna copy this whole thing and then uh, put it at the bottom. All right, and then I can see where my variables have left off. So right now the my variable variable is at two, the disk uh, location, list location is at 10. So I know I'm gonna need to change that list location because there is no location 10. And so I'd run into problems if I used that. Uh, and so I know that I wanna energize the magnet and then I wanna drive in reverse. So I'll change that to reverse. When the down eye is near an object, I no longer need to record the location of that item. Okay, so I don't actually need that and I don't need to, I am gonna change the list location um, by one, but I'm gonna go down so to negative one. And I wanna do that at the beginning, very beginning of every time I run this guy. Uh, okay. So energize to boost, go in reverse until it's at a near uh, object and then I want to start going forward but I want to go forward to something to do with the list location so I want to go forward until the Y value is greater than whatever is in the list location and so right now the list location is 729.9 because I was at location 10 I then am subtracting one, so I'm at position nine. I'm gonna boost my magnet, reverse, which will grab it. It'll stop because it sees it, and then it's gonna drive forward. So, drive forward, and then wait until the Y value is greater than the item in the list, which is right there. And which item? I don't want it to always be item one. I want it to be the item that I'm on. So I'm gonna use the list location of disk location. So it's gonna go forward until the Y value. So it's going forward, that Y value is, is uh, going from negative and then positive. And then once it gets to above 729.9, I want it to drop the magnet, excuse me, re release the disc by setting the magnet to drop. And then I'm gonna have it drive in reverse for about 300 so it can get away from that magnet before it comes back up here to energize that magnet to boost again. And then I want it to go through this three times and then go to the next lane. Now in order to go to the next lane, you can see that my variable it right now is at two, so this wouldn't run. But instead, what I'm gonna do is say if my variable is greater than zero, 
And the reason I'm doing that is that I'm gonna say, you're gonna see is greater than zero. So it's going to be greater than zero the first time. It's gonna run through this and it's going to change it by negative one. So when it runs through it the first time, it's going to be uh, two and then at the end of that, it's gonna be two minus one, which will be one. It'll go through this stuff again and then come back down here is one greater than zero. Yes, it is. So it would go through this and it would subtract one and then it would be zero. Is it greater than zero? No. So it'll run this thing twice for the change in uh, the lanes. All right, this is really all I should have to do and get all of those disks back in their location. So let's watch our program. Okay, so if you ran that first program that I had, you will notice it does not work. Uh, so the reason this one worked is I went back and I changed a couple of things. So let me show you what I had to change uh, to fix it. I had originally some of the reverses were uh, forward and some of the forward was reverse. I also had uh, some of the, uh, the turn heading down here was to 90 and it should have been negative 90 because we're turning it back and going the other direction. Uh, if you're not using heading, you know, then it would be a little bit more obvious because you would do, instead of turning right to go to the next lane, you would turn left to go to the next lane. Uh, and there's just a couple other little things. Uh, if you can see on the screen what I have uh, changed, this program will work. Uh, sometimes when you run this program, because it is going uh, forward and then reverse or reverse and then forward right away uh, down let's see where it grabs the disc so it says reverse wait until it sees it it's still going reverse and then forward uh, sometimes your robot will pop a wheelie if it does that uh, the way to avoid that is that you can uh, have it stop for a second and then start going forward again. Uh, it only does that, it only pops a wheelie every now and then, so if that's what your robot does, uh, then that's all you really gotta do is just put in a stop. So it'll reverse until it sees it, energize the magnet, uh, and and then stop. Stop going in reverse for a minute or se a second before you start going forward again. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Please make sure that you Subscribe to my channel. It looks like about uh, eight out of ten people that watch my videos do not subscribe. Uh, I really, really, really would appreciate it if you do subscribe. Uh, if you do subscribe, you don't have to click the notification bell, um, so then you won't be notified. You won't be annoyed when I release new videos. But just having that subscription really helps me out. Uh, if you do want to be notified when I release new videos, I've been releasing multiple videos a week now. Uh, click a notification bell. I'm sure if you watch YouTube, you know what that is. Um, a lot of YouTubers tell you to do that all the time. Um, but really, that will make sure that you get notified if I am live streaming or if I'm posting a new video. And then also comments. Comments help because it will ensure that uh, YouTube think, sees that this video is a popular video and then it'll uh, suggest it to other people that might be looking for videos just like this one, okay? Uh, also, a, a like if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Of course, I would like for you to like it with a thumbs up, but uh, don't just leave it empty. Give it a like or a dislike, either one, okay? Because again, that shows that the video has some popularity and that uh, people are, are watching it, and so then YouTube will suggest it, okay? Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And uh, one more thing, if you do give it a dislike, please make sure you put a comment down below and be specific about why you dislike it. I wanna improve, okay? I have a growth mindset, so if there's something about the video that you don't like, uh, or that you feel it was wrong, please put it in the comments. I don't consider that a troll as long as you're specific about why you dislike the video. I would greatly appreciate that. All right, thanks so much, and I hope to see you in the next one.